so my talk is going to be about the t-shirt as a walking billboard. Um, this is quite a challenge for me. I don't, don't do this often. I'm uh, quite new to the uh, Fashion Museum and to doing um, presentations. Um, so I hope it's all going to go very well. But I, I did want to accept this invitation to come and um, talk about the t-shirt because um, the t-shirt really um, exemplifies really what the Fashion Museum is about. The, the, uh, the t-shirt is actually probably the most um, democratic of all pieces of clothing. It's worn by, um, by everyone across generations, across genders and across incomes. And the interesting thing about um, the t-shirt is that it often isn't collected by museums and uh, there's a reason for that or there are a number of reasons for that but one of the important reasons um, for that is that textiles are actually um, very, um, very fragile and they deteriorate and um, so what, they, what museums tend to collect is people's good clothes, you know, so the clothes that have not been worn much or ceremonial clothing, that sort of thing. Whereas the T-shirt is indeed a piece, of a piece of clothing that gets worn a huge amount, uh, thrown in the washing machine and um, worn some more. And when it's um, old and shabby, it cleans the car or your shoes or um, serves as a paint rag. So there's you know, not a lot that survived to, um, you know, to actually come into a museum collection. But some of them do survive, and they survive for, um, for the reason that that they mean something to people, um, so this, that people have had some reason to, to hang on to them. Um, so, and that's really what the Fashion Museum um, does. It looks at um, the clothing that people uh, own and have worn, clothing that comes with a story that gives it a, a social, a cultural context. And the T-shirt, of course, is the perfect uh, example of that. It's a canvas for, um, for innovative graphics. It can be a canvas for um, provocative texts. The wearer of a printed T-shirt is advertising their, um, their belonging or their association with, um, with a particular group or um, organisation. Sometimes it's also um, advertising their opposition to a particular stance or... Um, uh, or, or um, um, you know, I don't know, um, piece of legislation or whatever. So a, a T-shirt um, advertises a belonging to to a social to a social group. It can advertise um, a belonging to a social group like a sports club or to a university, or um, perhaps it can also um, identify somebody as an outlaw, so somebody who doesn't belong to that group, who belongs to a group of outsiders. <clears throat> The T-shirt often also declares um, people's um, political um, stance, their political affiliations, whether that be um, in support of something, um, as in the you know political parties, or in uh, in opposition um, to things, as a protest. It also um, can demonstrate people's uh, cultural um, connection, their their um, cultural belonging, either <clears throat> to a group um, of people who like a particular type of music or perhaps um, indeed in this case that I'm going to end up on in this talk is, um, is the T-shirt as a, um, a cultural expression of, uh, of fashion. So the T-shirt um, started as um, underwear. It was worn by the um, American uh, soldiers under their uniforms. And in the Pacific, um, they... Um, it was very hot, and so they took their shirts off and ended up working in the white uh, T-shirts. Um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. The, um, when, when the war was, uh, when the Second World War was over, they, they took that, um, that practice back into, into common, um, common practice, or not into common practice, but into practice in, um, uh, in uh, American culture. And uh, the, but it was, it was, still a bit, um, I don't know, so French, a bit um, unconventional. And so it was worn indeed by the people who were, were unconventional. The rebels, this is indeed James Dean, the, the rebel without a cause from the film, the 1955 film, it was also worn, um, you may know from, uh, that Marlon Brando wore it in um, Streetcar Named Desire. 
and um, also in the film um, The Wild Ones. Wild One. Um, so it was, a, it was a bit of a rebellious um, thing to do, to wear a white, to wear your, your underwear uh, as, um, as clothing. In New Zealand too, we adopted that, um, that practice. This photo here is of um, the uh, Auckland chapter of the Californian Hells Angels. And they are, they, this is in 1960, they were the first um, group of uh, Hells Angels outside of, um, outside of LA. This photo, actually interesting, is taken outside the War Memorial Museum. <laughs> and you can see the bad boys in their, um, in their white t-shirts and leather, leather jackets. In the United States, the, these t-shirts, so the soldiers themselves sometimes screen printed their, um, their t-shirts with the company that they belong to um, and the like. And in the United States, they also um, started identifying um, alliances and, uh, with um, with the universities and with sports teams uh, on the t-shirt, uh, on, on the yes, on the um, on the t-shirt. So just with very simple, um, simple text and very simple logos. In New Zealand, we did the same. This is the first t-shirt that I have been able to find. I'm, I hope there's um, there's earlier examples than this, but this is the earliest I've been able to find. That's 1976. Very simple um, graphic for um, the t-shirt as a, a sort of a memento or a, um, um, a record of participation um, in, in an event, in a sporting event. And that practice of, uh, screen, of screen printing a t-shirt uh, to commemorate a, an event or to, um, to signal an event has just carried on right through until this example that you can see here, which is in 2011. This is my my husband's um, T-shirt. He was uh, the physio for the uh, Nuean touch team that went to the world tournament in, uh, in Scotland last year and came third. Um, so, so it's just that very simple uh, denotion of participation on the T-shirt is, um, is, is very uh, old and long-standing. Here you see... Um, you, you see this indeed the, sig the signalling of um, alignment with different groups. So you can see in here the little cluster of blues. It's a group of um, people who are competing in the round the bays in a team clearly that they've put together. And you can see that the t-shirts also carry advertising. So there's state, there's a little group of yellows here. Here you've got a little group of um, red, clearly a group that's sort of got together to participate in the, um, in the round the bays. So that, that's the, um, the sort of a line, that very, very simple, very basic um, use of the T-shirt as, as a billboard. Another area that, um, that's very, uh, very common is in, um, in music, and this is possibly the most famous music T-shirt. This one was designed, the lip logo was designed in uh, 1970, and it was actually originally on a on a, um, a sort of a loose leaf that sat inside the, um, the cover of the um, Sticky Lips uh, album, which came out in 19, uh, 1970. And this is then on a T-shirt for the 1972 tour of, um, of the United States. And this this T-shirt, this um, music T-shirt, has sort of become an... Um, and uh, you know, um, it, it was a, a symbol of the bad boys of uh, of rock and roll. But now it's become a, a sort of fashion icon of of um, music T-shirts. And there are two um, basic types of T-shirts in music: uh, the band T-shirts and indeed the touring T-shirts. So these are a couple of um, examples of um, band T-shirts, and you can see just by looking at them um, who would be wearing them. So th this type of T-shirt with the band um, uh, band uh, representations on them are um, have, have sort of two two sides. And one side of them, of course, is that they're um, they're commercial, they're merchandise that the bands or the bands promoters actually produce. Um, so they're sort of advertising for the for the band and and income generating. But for the wearer, of course. 
they're uh, like a uh, you know a tribal um, marker, so that they're indicating who they who they support, who they um, who they align with, how they see themselves. The other one that I just mentioned is indeed the um, the t-shirts, the, the touring t-shirts, and this one here is um, from um, 1996 Supergroove, and Supergroove's second album, which was called Backspace. And they took that album, uh, they did a, a tour. Now, um, Supergroove was very, um, uh, its audience was quite young, so there were a lot of uh, sort of underage. They, they couldn't really perform for their audience if they performed in nightclubs because their audience was often under 18. And so they, in fact, I wonder if it was under 20 at that stage already. Um, so, but their audience was quite young. And so they did a tour which was, um, a music store odyssey, they called it, and they travelled right throughout New Zealand. You can see here there's actually, you know, days and dates and times that they're performing at these, um, at these music stores. And part of, you could also, indeed, if you bought the album, you went in the draw to win the car, which is a Humber Super Snipe, which was their touring vehicle. So that was the, the end of the tour. Somebody won that wonderful car. And this is the most recent one. I've just been in Samoa uh, uh, for a week's glorious holiday. And uh, on the way over on the boat from uh, Upolo to Savai, these young men were on, um, on the boat. And uh, it was the 50th anniversary celebrations in Samoa, uh, independence celebrations. And UB40 had come to, uh, to Samoa to, um, to perform. And lots of people went. That was a very inexpensive conf concert, I think, um, sponsored indeed by Blue Sky. And Blue Sky is a, a new uh, provider of uh, cell phone coverage and cell phone um, uh, credits and things. And uh, the big player there is called Digicel. And so Blue Sky is indeed trying to get a bit of the get a bit of the market. And so they sponsored this um, this concert and um, these t-shirts. So they are the absolute latest concert t-shirts that I um, uh, I have seen. So the 1980s were actually the high point in t-shirts, both nationally and internationally. You recognize this one, of course. Anyone? <laughs> Good, excellent. Very cool. So this is the unprinted T-shirt, but it was also, the 80s were also the time when the um, Issues T-shirts, the slogan T-shirts, really had their, their heyday. And this one, people printed all sorts of um, um, messages and things on their, on their T-shirts. But the, the challenging thing, of course, with putting a slogan on your T-shirt is that you, in, in fact, um, invite confrontation you invite somebody to ask you to you know justify what you're saying on your on your t-shirt to justify your stance so it, it can be quite a um, quite a confrontational thing to do quite a, a challenging thing to do and so uh, there are all sorts of nuances in there there are very um, uh, very strident t-shirts but there are also um, many that are um, uh, more or less generic and um, you'll know them when you see them because we'll come to them in a minute here are a couple that are a little strident. This T-shirt on the right there, the heart T-shirt, actually belonged to John Minto. It was designed by, um, by Barry Lett, um, who is an artist and gallery holder at the, at the time. And um, he designed and this one, um, John, John Minto has given to, um, to Te Papa. So this is in the Te Papa collection, so that you can see the front on the front and then on the back, the um, Stop the Tour. So 1981, everyone knows, of course, Springboks tour. Um, thousands of New Zealanders protested and invaded pitches and were involved in civil disobedience. Um, and the Heart mem members of Heart were part of the organisation that organised these um, demonstrations and protests. So I think to wear a T-shirt like that in protest, you're probably all right. But you, I don't know if you'd be wise to wear it. Um, you know, wear it down Queen Street or something like that, and it looks to it looks to me fairly unworn, I must say. <laughs> and I could could sympathise with that in uh, in 1981. This one on the right here is one that's in um, in the exhibition downstairs. Um, it's from 1987. Uh, drawn, it's a drawing by um, Adrian Foot, and her label is Footprints. 
I went on and worked with Adrian later um, with my own label, but this is from um, before we worked together. And uh, in 87, New Zealand ju had only just passed the um, New Zealand Nuclear Free Zone Disarmament and Arms um, Control Act. So um, stopping uh, um, nuclear armed and um, nuclear armed sh ships coming into New Zealand. And it wasn't an entirely popular um, decision at the time. It did take a couple of years before New Zealanders really themselves. Uh, so it was a policy that was advanced by government and it took a little while before the majority of New Zealanders came on board. And by 1989, um, about 52% of New Zealanders were in favour of us being nuclear free whatever the cost, and by 1990 even National had signed up to the um, to anti-nuclear anti stance. So this um, probably wasn't quite such a controversial t-shirt, but still one that was making a real statement about, um, about this pers the person who wore it, about their beliefs. This is the scenario in, uh, in England. On the right there you can see this Catherine Hammett, Hamnet, sorry, and she, this is 1984, in 1984 she was awarded the um, British Fashion Council's um, Designer of the Year Award and also by the um, Bath Museum, Costume Museum, they awarded her the uh, Designer of the Year Award for menswear. So she was, you know, um, had a lot of status in 84 and so indeed was invited to meet with um, Maggie Thatcher and um, took the opportunity to, um, to have her views uh, recognised, the Pershing missiles here, so the nuclear missiles um, that were being um, uh, held on, um, on British soil and there was a lot of um, protest. In fact, 58% of people were, um, were against um, um, Pershing um, uh, nuclear missiles. Um, I'm sure she didn't make that up. <laughs> but what you can see, um, uh, here, well, there's some other T-shirts. The first, the one at the top there is staying alive in '85. So it's '84. You think that might be about nuclear um, power, but it actually is an anti-drug um, uh, T-shirt that she made. And this one here is the most recent one. I think it's just last year's, and it was made. Um, it, uh, so it's no more fashion victims, and it was a, um, a T-shirt that was. Um, uh, celebrating 20 years of, um, of the availability of organic cotton and it was indeed making a, a, a plea for, um, for fashion to be, uh, to be gentle on the earth, so not for, for the earth and the environment not to be a victim of, um, of our fashion, uh, fashion whim. And this is some um, pixie gold off uh, modelling it. But you can see in these t-shirts, these two particularly, that what's happening is not just the graphic, um, on the t-shirt, but the design of the t-shirt and the uh, material that the t-shirt's made in has, is changing as well. So you're starting to get that, that um, fashion element in there. There was a lot of people who asked whether, you know, the 58%, um, whether that was a, an activist statement or whether it was a fashion statement. That t-shirt is actually in fact made of silk. So it's a silk t-shirt, so it's a, it's a garment really. Um, but she's using that, uh, that garment as a canvas to, um, to express her views. And this one here, indeed, although it's organic cotton, is, is you know, sort of very clearly uh, you know, a fashion-styled garment of its um, time. And in, uh, 19, uh, in 2006, this collection is, these T-shirts are from House of Holland. Um, Henry Holland uh, is a fashion, calls himself a fashion designer, trained as a, um, sorry, excuse me, um, trained as a communi in, in communications and uh, was born about the same year that um, uh, Catherine Hammett met Thatcher in her, um, in her t protest t-shirt and he's used that, um, uh, that style of lettering, that style of billboarding to um, um, you know, to make his T-shirts, um, they, call, he's called them um, fashion groupie T-shirts. So they've got catchphrases such as, uh, get your freak on Giles Deacon. And indeed this one here you will all recognise, because it's about our girl. What a corker, Karen Walker. And yabba dabba do, Karen uh, Walker to the, re Karen to the rescue. I don't know if you know the Karen Walker um, 
uh, what she called again? Sorry, the little girl with the pack on her on her back. The little yeah. runaway. runaway. Thank you very much. Yep. Yeah. So it's um, in response to the runaway uh, runaway collection or yeah the runaway imagery. So he says of himself on his website. He says the House of Holland girl is cool, confident, and savvy. She wears labels without letting them wear her. And I would say, yeah, right. <laughs> so he's using he's using the um, the, the symbolism of um, protest. So he's he's capitalising on um, on Catherine Hammett's um, model really to um, to make fa you know make fashion um, uh, garments really um, commercial fashion garments as these people are also using the sort of symbols of protest on the right, there is um, uh, Machino for children with a, a, a peace symbol on it. And here we've got Carlos San Santana wearing uh, Che Guevara. In, uh, that's in 2007, I think, that one, at some music awards. But it's clearly not about the, um, the symbolism of um, uh, Che <laughs> So by, by the, um, the 2000s, T-shirts actually become very much a fashion item. And you can see these images are all from the um, identity uh, gallery. So T-shirts that people have uploaded themselves, they're the, the T-shirts that they've chosen to represent themselves, uh, chosen as their favourite T-shirts representing um, you know, who, who, who they are, who they see themselves. And one of the nicest things about these is that on the um, website you'll see that each person who puts their t-shirt up there's a little space where they can put the reason why they've um, why they've chosen this particular um, t-shirt so what you're getting is indeed the t-shirt with the story with the story of its significance of its meaning to the um, to the wearer so some of the meanings of course are indeed um, you can see some of them here and I have some more here which are the sort of t-shirts of belonging so uh, stating sort of social um, connections again, so it's not the UCLA, but um, you know the iconic "I Love New York" and indeed um, "Only Hunger," and the uh, very well-known um, "Grail in the sort of um, uh, sort of parky, parky house suburbs um, T-shirt stories. This is uh, one of one of the ones that I think it's it's quite sort of quite a new uh, has quite a new appearance, quite a new um, uh, new thing is indeed these um, very personal um, uh, t-shirts that speak about about a very small and very intimate um, sort of uh, social um, connection. So it's very, they're very niche. People print them themselves. They wear them across, you see them worn by uh, young men such as this, but also by children and, uh, and uh, aunts and nanas, so that across the generations as well. And they're indeed um, speaking about a connection, about a connection in this case with this, um, this young man who, um, who has died, a very young man who's died. Same imagery three different stories. One of these images is indeed um, a commercial promotion. One of them is a satirical statement and the other one is from a fashion collection. I don't know if you can identify, um, can anyone identify for me? On the right here from uh, Popo Hardware, um, the T-shirt imagery playing on a satirical comment on the Tui billboards. Um, Tell me the truth, son, and I won't fussy you. Yeah, right. Um, so this is a, a sort of social, a social, uh, a social comment on um, uh, perhaps a criticism of some of the old um, um, child uh, child rearing practice of um, of uh, traditional uh, Samoan society in New Zealand the one on the right there is indeed one you can just buy online from their Tui shop and the one in the middle is from a collection I did with um, Paul Hartigan 
and Paul Hart again um, in his artwork works with uh, with popular culture and popular symbolism, and that was used then onto uh, onto the T-shirt and onto the belt. So there's, there's that that sort of um, you know that sort of huge diversity, even using um, using the same same imagery, same huge diversity of purpose really in um, in the T-shirt. And, but in the in the fashion scene, the um, the T-shirt has a a, um, a very um, uh, what uh, I suppose what the T-shirt's doing is is making uh, making fashion um, accessible for uh, for uh, for people. Where high fashion can be very expensive, the T-shirt indeed makes it accessible. And I've brought along indeed to show you this from a collection I did called La Di Da. It's a collection I did with, uh, with New Zealand artist Sally Tagg, who does um, photography and a lot of botanical photography. So this jacket's got a lot of the sort of shaping and things from, it's quite a complex piece to sew with the print all over it. And it retails, it retailed, it doesn't anymore, for um, $470, which might be prohibitive for some people, but you can have a little piece of the La Di Da collection for only one hundred and twenty-three dollars, so it's it's making um, the T-shirt for the fashion designer makes their design work, their design ideas um, accessible to um, you know to a to a much broader audience. Um, you'll see in the next slide. I should have taken my the very famous Karen Walker pearls dress again very price, uh, pricey piece and a very limited edition and next to it the affordable and accessible t-shirt. Yes. It's very well, it's very much a thing of the 2000s really that um, that the fashion that fashion designers embraced the uh, the accessibility that the T-shirt gave to um, to other people, and you'll see it in a minute in some of the other other forms. One of the things that um, that that is also happening. So there's accessibility, and the other thing that's happening in um, in the in the T-shirt, which I'll just show you in a minute, is that, they, that the, there's a, a fashion component again coming into the garment design. So that's that step on again from there. So this is yeah, very early um, 2000s, really. And though everyone really was doing them, you know, Karen Walker started indeed with the Runaway um, um, series and onto sweatshirting and things like that. And, um, but it was a way that, that people could get by into um, to high-end fashion. Adrian Howard is another person who indeed, he started as a graphic designer, so he started just making T-shirts and moved the other way so instead of making his design work accessible through um, um, th through um, uh, bringing t-shirts into his range he moved from his t-shirts into a more complex um, design range and the famous t-shirt um, people of course are Nomdi and they very much use the imagery on uh, on t-shirts to um, they use the graphics really uh, to uh, to communicate the idea of the uh, of the collection, but they also use very str very clearly um, uh, design the garment design. So this one is from their latest collection, Do Not Disturb, but it's a very disturbed T-shirt, of course. Um, it's had its arm, its sleeves cut out of it. The ribbing in the top has been um, cut open. They've slashed some holes in the side and put a lace um, through the through the back. Um, so they've, you know, so they've they've disturbed the idea of a of a t-shirt as a as a fa you know as a fashion statement. Here you see on the right, uh, twenty seven names. That collection <coughs> it was uh, two thousand ten, two thousand eleven, was called twelve. It was inspired by the um, protest movement of the um, 1960s, and so it's got those elements. You can see there's a little bit of, sort of beadwork around the edges. It's a very quite a loose, soft um, fit. So it's sort of got that sort of uh, that hippie aesthetic 
the letters on it are actually um, uh, sewn on, so it's got that uh, you know that sort of crafty, um, happy, happy aesthetic, and the um, and just and just a, quite a little bit of sort of an unconventional t-shirt um, shape. On the right here is um, Street Life, and this is Street Life from the current season, uh, which they showed at Fashion Week last year. And this, uh, the artwork on this t-shirt is uh, Max Gimlet. And Max Gimlet is a New Zealand um, artist working out of New York. But you can see that the t-shirt itself is very designed too, so it's got the puff sleeves. It's also made out of a very, very fine knit fabric. So not just the... Um, the um, T-shirt is a canvas, but the, uh, the, the not just the um, yeah the front of the T-shirt, not just the the T-shirt is a canvas, but also the uh, the garment itself is becoming a canvas for design expression as well. And that's the one I this last one here I brought along because it's the one that you have seen on the website and um, on the posters. This is um, Cross My Heart. It's from my, the last collection that I did. And it's indeed got, um, got elements in it that have got symbolism and significance. So the T-shirt the itself is a flat, just um, two flat pieces. And that uh, is sort of a reference to the time that I started. I started in the, uh, making clothing in the 80s when there was a lot of design was very much influenced by Japanese design, which was indeed uh, works in, in flat planes rather than in, uh, in round forms. So it's got that. Um, it's got the, um, the, the cross over the heart, um, you know, cross my heart. So it's um, that sort of promise and, um, and integrity that I, um, I hoped that I always had in the work that I had made. And it was my last collection. So um, it's the collection um, of my heart. So that's, um, that's that T-shirt. Again, just, um, you know, using all of the aspects of the, of the um, T-shirt to communicate the, the meaning that you, you, um, uh, um, you're trying to communicate, indeed. This one here is uh, the last one that I'm going to show you, and this is uh, Shona Tafiel. Uh, this uh, is from a, a series that she did uh, called um, Iwi. And this in it has indeed those, um, those aspects of uh, meaning that I talked about of presenting um, the cultural meaning. So this is a fashion, uh, a fashion t-shirt. It's um, a, a t-shirt dress. It was shown at New Zealand uh, Fashion Week as part of a, a collection there. So it's a sort of high, high-end fashion uh, platform, the Fashion Week. On the... Um, uh, front, you'll see what uh, what uh, uh, looks like a patch, and it is intended to look like a patch. Um, Shona Tafia's uh, stepfather was the man who designed the Black Power patch, and he died a few years ago. And when he died at his funeral, uh, a whole lot of um, members of all the different and diverse gangs came. He himself was never a member of any of the gangs, despite having designed that patch, but he was never a member of any of those gangs. But everyone came, and it made Shona aware of the positive side of a patch, the positive side of a patch, which is a um, um, so political statement, but also a statement of her social connection, and her social connection is indeed Mao, which is... Um, the uh, proper name for Mount Monganui, and that's where she's from. And the final shot that I'm going to show you is indeed um, the contemporary uh, T-shirt that, that encompasses all these things that I've just been talking about, the ultimate and accessible T-shirts. It comes from Glassons. It's clearly, uh, clearly, uh, you know, fits that sort of cultural expression that uh, it's a high, they're high fashion pieces. Um, t-shirts designed by high-end designers, not just plain t-shirts, but also designer style. You'll see that there's quite a variation in the um, in the necklines and the um, and the armholes and things in the t-shirts. It, it, they're, um, they, they fit that, um, that social communication because what they're communicating is indeed um, the support of a good cause, the support both from the designers 
and from the purchaser. And the imagery on them, indeed, are, are, are political statements or are statements, and there are statements about, um, about the, the designer's statements, really, about um, breast cancer. So there's always a, a sort of response to, um, to breast cancer. So on the um, far right is Karen Walker, of course, and hers is called Happy Heart. The one next to her is, is Ruby, and Ruby's T-shirt's called Smoking Guns. And Zambezi's, you can't see very well in this image, but it's got angel wings on it. And it, um, so two angel wings in white, they printed also on black and on other colours. And that one there is called Wings of Desire. The Sabelle is called Chain Heart. This one here has got Kissing Angelfish and is by uh, Kate Sylvester. And the one on the right here is Trelise Cooper and it's called um, Birds of a Feather. So in these t-shirts you can see that the t-shirts are a canvas for innovative graphics. You can see that the, the um, t-shirts are also a medium for fashionable design and that the wearer of the t-shirt is expressing their association, their connection with um, with a particular um, um, community, with a particular uh, particular group. Thank you. <laughs> ah, well, the Fashion Museum is uh, an online museum, and we curate pop-up exhibitions. So it's those two two aspects. We have don't have a collection, don't have a building. We. Um, Thank you, Chanel. There are brochures here, so you're very welcome to, uh, to take one. We've been um, going for just over two years now, and we've done um, uh, two exhibitions, LJ uh, in, at the Gus Fisher Gallery, and Black at um, Britomart Art and Dunn in Wellington. Um, so we have a, a theme. The ne next exhibition is going to be about home sewing, and will be on in September. And we um, have done a shout out to people to try and find garments with stories, with reasons why people have kept them. Um, so that it, things that they've made or that somebody has made for them, but they come then with, with that history, which gives you the social and cultural context of, um, of the time, really. And so that, yeah, that'll be in September. So I don't know if you're home sewers, any of you? Um, yeah, good. Ah, good. Excellent. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes, yeah, so that'll be in, in September. And when that exhibition's finished, we record all the exhibition, we record, photograph all the garments in the exhibition, as well as uh, while they're in exhibition, but also um, in the catalogue. And they'll go, they'll go on our website, which we're fundraising at the moment to build. And the when the w website's up, you will also be able to just upload your own garments onto there too. So people will just be able to, be able to put their, to add to the, to the stories and um, you know, correct the information on there and uh, help enlighten us and you know keep it sort of um, uh, accurate I hope and um, and interesting. <laughs>